not at the junction of death. Yeah, let me shut the windows. Keep the noise down. I'm gonna have to put the blower on the window, so my apologies for any background noise. But uh, it's the first sort of uh, sort of decently frosty morning, you know. So I've just got to defrost the uh, windscreen. Anyway, how are you? All right. Everything going okay? Looking forward to Christmas. It's the uh, 2nd of uh, December. And it's uh, there's a bit of high cloud, a few bits of blue sky poking through. My plane's over at, uh, or my, my daughter who owns the plane, uh, is over at, uh, her plane is over at Thurrock, getting its annual MOT, Ministry of uh, well, they don't have any MOT planes, but they do. They are required to have an annual inspection and a six monthly checkup, you know. Ha, quite appropriate, really. Anyway, get what? Turns out there are, there are uh, sensors in, in seats, in car seats. They do have uh, weight sensors in them, so they know whether anyone's sitting in them or not. See, I was thinking, um, it's too complicated, I thought that they might be like a strain gauge or a, some sort of a load uh, gauge, but, but they're not, they're just simple uh, uh, things that uh, get, as soon as they just press down they complete the circuit and then, uh, and that's why sometimes if you put something very heavy on the passenger seat, then um, uh, the, then the seat light, the seatbelt light will come on because the, uh, these two contacts will have been closed by the weight of whatever's in the seat. So I had a chat, this is one of the advantages of being a dentist, you've got so many people you can ask questions. And I had a chat with an engineer and he said, yeah, he said there's a weight sensor in the seat. I'm like, what? Every, every front seat's got a weight sensor in it. And he said, yeah, some of them have got them in the back seats as well now. <laughs> oh, well, who'd have thought it, eh? Who'd have thought it? So it wasn't magic after all. Anyway, we got chatting about whether or not it might be possible to uh, build a car that uh, uh, wouldn't uh, start up, you know, if you were too fat. And, uh, there, and, you know, would make you walk. And he said, yeah, it's perfectly possible. So there you go. So now the government has got its authoritarian uh, hat on and it's forcing us all to wear masks and uh, it's going to force us all to have vaccines. It's uh, probably going to force us all to... Um, buy cars that won't start if you are way over 100 kilos who knows who cares <laughs> oh dear so anyway I thought I'd talk about something that uh, we're doing because we always we like to experiment you know and if um, we see an advantage in doing something then we do it and it, and it gets done within a week or two uh, or less if it's an adjustment to the website or something so anyway, what we're doing is we've gone from a system of uh, allowing patients to pay on the day for treatment to a, a system of paying in advance. And uh, we, we uh, the reason behind this was that like lots of other service sector industries like uh, hairdressers and restaurants and things like that, we had a massive wave of people making appointments and then either not turning up or cancelling at the last minute. This is in October. And I think um, it's it's in response, I think, to the current sort of general ennui uh, about the virus um, and uh, people's sort of perception that you know that there's a war on. Therefore, uh, things that normally couldn't happen do happen. And one of the things I think that they thought that they could do a bit more of was. Um, uh, just uh, plead that uh, you know for some reason whatever they can't get into their appointment and we were spending a lot of time sitting around uh, again generally very stressed about the fact that people weren't coming in I mean there's at least one a day now I mean if you you see 40 patients a day and one of them doesn't turn up then that's fine um, but that's a different model you see if, if I was going to let's say I was working on the National Health Service and let's say that I was pretty bad at running on time and a lot of patients didn't turn up then I wouldn't give people schedule appointment times I would 
uh, I would uh, start telling that the clinic was from two till four, and that people would be seen in the order that they turn up, and uh, they can then decide for themselves when they want to come in, or even if they don't want to come in. And as far as people not turning up, what you do is let's say that you normally see 20 patients in a morning, and uh, three of them don't turn up on average. Then what you do is you just book 23 patients, and hey presto, to within plus or minus one patient, you'll have you'll you'll be spot on your target, won't you? Anyway, we don't work like that. We we run very strictly on time, and our minimum appointment used to be half an hour. What with the sterilisation now, it's tending to be uh, 45 minutes, and uh, also because we're we're trying to do a bit more work on each visit. Um, uh, you know, so like for example, if someone says they need a checkup, they'll get half an hour booked, and then we'll have a 15-minute break. <laughs> this sounds, this will sound amazing to some of you. I know that. I do appreciate that. But you have to understand, I've been in the profession 40 years. Okay, so don't, don't. Uh, you know, if you're nearly qualified and you think, well, <laughs> one checkup takes half an hour, <laughs> and then he has 15 minutes off, then this is it. But I'm at the twilight of my career. Okay, so. I can, if you can do that, and you don't, you know, you're not. It, when, I, when I was younger, I used to, I used to work like a stink, and, because uh, I, you know, you want to build up some money, don't you, and put your kids through school. Although my kids didn't go through private school, they went through the public state sector. But you, well, you like to go on holidays, you like to draw a salary, don't you? <laughs> That's something I hardly do. Um, anyway, so, you know, but if someone rings up, or, or they, what they do now is they do it all on uh, email. So the way we're doing it now is that um, you have to triage your patients. So what we do is, if anybody rings, we uh, send them a link to our a questionnaire on our website. Uh, it's not actually; it's a Google document. It's a Google spreadsheet. It's a Google form. Okay, and Google forms are very easy to do. You can easily knock up a Google form. Uh, and what happens is then that then records the data in a spreadsheet which you can view online and we have a link to this Google form from our website so if it says like you know would you like to uh, book an appointment they click on this link and it takes them to the questionnaire short online medical questionnaire have you got symptoms of COVID have you been in contact with anyone are you in a vulnerable group when would you like to come in what's your preferred day what's your preferred morning or afternoon and that's about as granular as it gets. And then, um, and then what happens is we keep this uh, spreadsheet open. We open it in the morning, and then we keep it open during the day because it updates automatically in real time. It's not like you have to keep reloading it. So if someone requests an appointment, then then it comes through. Now, what we then do is, if they do indicate that they need some sort of uh, treatment, so for example, if they're um, they might say, uh, I, uh, th there are various options as to why they want an appointment. One would be like, I need a routine checkup, but I think everything's fine. Another one would be, I need a checkup, but I think I've uh, got a problem. And then the next one is, uh, um, you know, I'd like to resume treatment. And then the one after that is, uh, I, uh, I've got an emergency, uh, you know, painful tooth, broken denture or something like that, or other, and then they can write down, they can write down. now. If someone puts on the spreadsheet, um, I need an appointment urgently because I'm in pain, I've got a broken denture or something, then what we do is we ring them up and we say, look, you know, just in order to make sure that we uh, allow the appropriate time, the right amount of time for the whatever's wrong with you, uh, just can you just tell us what's up and what you think needs doing? Now, you might assume that all these people are all need booking in the same day, but in fact, a lot of them just say, um, you know, I used to have gum problems, uh, and sorry, this junction of death. Sorry. So what we do is we ring them up, and then some of them say, "Oh, I've got, I've got gum problems. My gums have started bleeding again. I've been working abroad for three years, so I think I need to come in." So for them, you can say, "Yeah, we can get you in like next week." We've booked up about a week ahead now, which is for us is like, and uh, as we're coming up to December, I think it's going to get quiet again. Excuse me, but uh, 
Yeah, so then what we do is we then, I think they appreciate the phone call and we appreciate the fact that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, we, that we, we get a sort of a heads up as to what might need doing and we've got sufficient time to do it and stuff like that. Besides, and that's the sort of personal service that you, you know, you should really get from a private dentist. Um, now, what's the next stage? Next stage is, I say to them, like, okay, well, I'll get you in book next week for a checkup. I need to take 45 pounds off you. Have you got a credit card handy? And you don't uh, you don't launch into some diatribe about oh we are having to charge in advance now because so many people aren't turning up, etc. You just say uh, no, I need to take 45 pounds off you. Have you got a credit card handy? And nobody says nobody. Well, I, I'll tell you what. There've there been one or two people who have said, but mostly people say oh yeah, hang on, hang on, Lord, it's upstairs. I'll go and get it. And you're like yeah, that's fine, no problem. So we then, we have a thing on the computer called Virtual Terminal, which is which literally just asks for the amount and the credit card number and expiry date and CVV number, yeah? So we, can then, we then take payment over the, over the phone and we then, we don't send them an acknowledgement from the credit card system, which can, can print a, a thing, what we do is we uh, literally just type into their notes that they paid the money and then we send them an invoice by um, a receipt by email. So they've got a receipt for their payment and then they've got a credit on their account, which in case of a checkup, £45 credit. And then when they come in, um, we, know, we know that they've paid, and I'll tell you why we know they've paid in a minute, um, because uh, and then, so when they come in, they have the checkup, and then if that's all they've had is a checkup, then they can come in, leave all their stuff, get sprayed, get tested, sit down, have the checkup, and then just go straight out the way they came in, back into their coat, out the door, yeah? The reason we know they paid is because a day, the day before, we look round, we look down the computer, and we check that everybody's paid for tomorrow. And uh, in order to do that, what we have to do is we have to have collected the money uh, 24, 48 hours in advance, right? So, so that when we go to check, we know everyone's paid. So 5 o'clock Tuesday, we can run through the book, make sure everybody's paid Wednesday. Now, you might say, okay, well, what happens if someone hasn't got a credit card? Or uh, So what we've got is we've got the option to invoice them. So, And this is pre, pre-facto, not post-facto. So let's say someone says, I haven't got my credit card on me uh, or my wife's gone off with my credit card or my husband or whatever. In which case we say, don't worry, I'll, um, we'll invoice you, we'll send you an invoice. Hello. There's a blooming jump jet there. Hurry a jump jet on the back of a, back of a plane. The back of, on the back of a truck. <laughs> Wings off, hopefully, you know, fortunately. <coughs> That's quite appropriate, I suppose. Seeing as we're going past Manston, uh, it might it might uh, have come from the Manston uh, Spitfire Museum. So, what we do is we can then, if we we got their name, their email address, optionally their telephone number, we can then send them an invoice for forty five pounds, and it's made payable two days before their appointment. So if they're coming in on a Wednesday, they have to have paid it by the Monday. That's because we check on the Tuesday and it needs to have been paid by then. If we said it was payable by the Tuesday, then some of them wouldn't wouldn't have been paid by the time we checked. And so we have to have it payable like 48 hours in advance. Then, <clears throat> how can we do this, you ask? Well, the answer is that we've ditched uh, Lloyds Bank card net and gone with uh, an American firm called Square, um, which is uh, expensive. You'll you'll think it's expensive. It's 1.25% for everything, and 2.5% if you use the virtual terminal or uh, you invoice it. Okay. Now, I know, I know, I know what you're saying. Okay, you're saying, ha, you. Yeah, what a mug, what a mug. Because I've got, I'm paying 0.3%, not 1.5%, I'm paying 0.3%. And 
and you know I'm gonna get that down to 0.28 <laughs> but, but let me tell you why I'm right and you're wrong okay <laughs> for a start we've had no more patients fail to come in so well, our booking is at hundred percent I never again will we have to sit around moping at each other and saying well what should we do shall we send the patient a bill an invoice if we do they won't pay you know I've said before the primary reason for sending invoices was to was to stop the patient coming back he wasn't to get the money they never paid the money but it does stop them making another appointment that they're, they're just as likely to fail and um, what it does is it, <laughs> it sort of changes things around a bit because before, what we used to do was we used to have all these discussions about, oh, her car won't start. She said she's called in the RAC. Should we, do you think we ought to charge her, you know? Or, uh, you know, she's uh, residential, she's in charge of a residential home and one of the one of the occupants has escaped and so she says she can't come in because she's got to sit by the phone. And do you think that, you know, are, are, we, are we being Scrooge-like if we invoice her? And this is like you know you shouldn't be having this discussion you should absolutely not be having this discussion we are very generous in terms of cancellation if you cancel anything up to 24 hours beforehand one working day then you can you can reschedule or cancel or cancel and if you cancel obviously you get your money back we just refund the money if you reschedule then no money needs to change hands because your deposit then secures whatever date the appointment's been changed to but I'm very much like we treat uh, our surgery like an airline. Someone books a chair, a seat. Uh, someone books a seat at 11 o'clock on Wednesday. I don't care whether it's for a filling or for a flight to Belfast. If they don't turn up and that seat flies empty, then they don't get a refund. <laughs> they don't. And I don't care why. I don't care why. I don't care if they've set themselves on fire and they're in hospital. They, they don't get a refund because the risk of them not turning up lies on our shoulders until 24 hours before and at that point we hand over the risk to them. And that is all we ask them to do is to adopt the risk that they might not be able to come in for one working day before their appointment. And you'll find that... Um, I mean, uh, installers like Sky and that do that as well. I think, you know, you just have to accept that that's, that is the, that's the sensible way to do it, if you want to stay in business anyway. So, when someone doesn't come in now, all your incentives are back to front. Because now, whereas before you would have, um, you would have been thinking to yourself, well, Shall we um, give them the ring and tell them that providing they come in some other time today that they won't be charged? Or uh, shall we write the charge off or whatever? Now you're sitting around thinking this is good. Uh, you know, <clears throat> you're, not, you're not hoping that they won't come in. You're hoping that they won't come in late because the last thing you want when the patient's got a half hour appointment is for them to come in 20 minutes late and then expect to be, you know, for you to take half an hour over their treatment. But you are sort of think, sitting there thinking, okay, they've forgotten, and it, they usually have forgotten. I mean, we had a, some woman uh, this week who was due in on the 30th of November, and she just didn't turn up. And when we uh, asked her, you know, when we sent her a text saying, you know, sorry, but you're going to be charged, um, she said, oh, it's because your surgery is called first impressions, and it become uh, first impressions starts with the first. She just got it in her head that her appointment was on the first. I mean, a 10 out of 10. I've got to give you 10 out of 10 for excuses. That is, you know, and these people, they will ring up and they will try it on, especially if they know they're going to get charged. They're, they're, sometimes they're apologetic if they're uh, going to get invoiced. And then in those cases, if they're very apologetic, then we tended not to invoice them. Um, the ones uh, who, were, who were sort of less apologetic did tend to get invoiced, especially if they'd done it more than once. Um, but now they know they're going to get invoiced. It's quite a funny thing because they're like, um, they, they think they can blag their way out of having to pay by, by giving you some sort of story. And the stories are very inventive. And uh, we have taken to 
just saying I'm sorry um, you know computer says no in effect I've, I've said that you know what you could do is you could say it's a policy right you could say that's our policy but then they know that it's not it's a policy that you uh, created and you can change so what so basically what you're saying is it's my decision uh, but strangely by saying that the computer won't let us <clears throat> change appointments at less than 24 hours notice or or cancel charges um, you know they are what you're saying is the policy in effect is codified into the computer uh, which it isn't but you know I mean you could still we could still choose to write stuff off but <clears throat> But they just seem to accept it better, you know, and, and and they're going to have to accept it. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't care what makes them accept it. They're going to have to accept it. So what you do is you you feed them the medicine with the uh, the the biggest uh, spoonful of sugar, don't you, that you can. <coughs> now, what's happened is we have had a few people who uh, have said, oh, you know, oh. Um, I ring you back. I haven't got a credit card with me at the moment, and they haven't rung back. Now, now, what does that tell you? That tells me that that patient was uh, probably going to cancel, or wanted to re at least reserve the right, reserve the power to cancel or not turn up. And uh, you don't, you know, that's not the deal. You know, the deal is you make them the appointment, you pay for the staff, you pay all your fixed costs. And uh, you don't allow them to reserve the right to waste that time by just simply not turning up. That's a very uh, asymmetrical relationship that we, we don't allow. And then, of course, you have um, the occasional patient who, um, you know, would ring up and say, oh, I've got really, really bad toothache. And you say, well, uh, OK, you know, I can get you in today, but I'll, I'll need to... Um, uh, you know, I'll send you an invoice, which will need to be paid by the time you get in here. And then they write back and say, well, my sister comes here and she didn't have to pay and uh, my husband comes here and he didn't have to pay. Uh, <clears throat> and because so they're sort of taking it personally, you know. There we go. In which case you just write back and say, it's, you know, we've had to introduce this policy as a result of large number of patients uh, not turning up and refusing to pay you know and end, end of so what but what it has actually it has actually uh, done the job of weeding out the patients who um, uh, are going to cancel at short notice or, or not turn up and that's why it's worth paying 1.5 percent for okay because you get the whole back end you get the invoicing system it's square it's called you get the whole back end you've got a computer back end and everything so uh, and uh, and uh, you know we don't even bother cashing up at the end of the day because the money that we have taken is just the money that's gone through square so you just ask it how much you've earned anyway that's uh, that's a that's a substantial deviation in terms of how you charge patients so um, uh, if you think it's worth it then uh, get in touch if you have any problems and, and give it a go all right Nice to talk to you. See you soon. Bye.